Bodiless Screams by Adrian Dunmore. Hello, dear listeners out there. It seems that some of you enjoyed my first story on this side about my paranormal experiences. I have a few more that I wanted to share with you, so I hope you also enjoy the following one. Before I get started, I just wanted to say that I know how unbelievable it will sound and I don't care if you don't believe me I can understand if you have your doubts and I don't blame you for that a lot of people have called me a weirdo because I believe in ghosts and demons and magic and witchcraft but I stay above it I like the normal sciences very much, but in my opinion, there are things out there that we just don't understand yet. Uh, Anyway, here is the story. (sighs) This experience happened when I was 14. Ever since I was a child, I have been fascinated with the occult and the paranormal and I've also had a few encounters. It It's always been a family thing and I, I grew up with that stuff. One day when I was on winter holidays from school, uh, two of my friends called for me. Uh, for the story, I will call them Ben and Joseph, though those are not their real names. They said that they had found an empty old building and that they wanted to visit and they asked me if I wanted to join them. Ben told me that it isn't a normal building. According to old stories, it is haunted. They knew I was into that kind of stuff and I absolutely wanted to go with them. My mom and my grandma, who know many things about occultism, witchcraft and the like, didn't want me to go at first. My grandma said that this is a place I don't know and it could be very dangerous to search there looking for paranormal things, but I managed to persuade them. I've had a few paranormal experiences before and for me, it wasn't a game. I have the right respect and I am careful with occult and paranormal things because, well, something like that can easily go wrong. Well, the day came. Um, The three of us set off for the abandoned building. Uh, For the trip, we had to take a long train journey uh, to a little city where Ben's relatives lived. And we stayed with them for the next few days. On the way, we talked to each other about the building. Ben told me that it's a house that had belonged to a doctor who'd also kept his offices there. It was very old and would soon be demolished. He then told me a few stories about this house. According to those stories, there were a lot of ghosts in there that had once been patients of the doctor and sometimes people would disappear. And some nights you could see figures behind the windows and some people have heard horrible screams coming from inside the house. Not a lot of people have dared to go in there. Mostly just teenagers who wanted to test their courage, especially on Halloween. (sighs) I do believe in ghosts. But I'm also skeptical about stories like this one. There are a lot of stories out there and most of the time it's things people just made up over the years. And the older the building is, the scarier the stories can be. But again, I am respectful towards that because you don't know who or what you could make angry. Joseph, on the other hand, didn't believe in any of it. For him, it just sounded like an adventure and he didn't believe that we would see any ghosts or anything. That is why I like him so much. Oh, 
though he is very skeptical, he doesn't make fun of people who have experienced weird things. Our group is a healthy mix of different opinions. But let's get on with the story, shall we? We arrived in the afternoon. Uh, we were too tired to go into the house that day, so we arrived in the afternoon. We were too tired to go to the house then, so we decided to go the next day. And the house was really creepy. Very old. And we, we already had a bad feeling about it. My senses told me that it maybe could be a bad idea to go in there. Joseph wasn't afraid, but Ben was already scared. He isn't that brave. I can understand him and told him that we were with him and he doesn't have to be afraid. As a child, I had an experience with something you could describe as a really evil entity. Uh, I've also recorded this story, so you can check it out if you want. After that experience, my grandma gave me a talisman which would protect me. And I lent it to Ben with the hope that it would make him feel a bit better. And it worked. For a while. Finally, we entered the building. It was completely empty in there. Just garbage, pieces of broken furniture and graffiti on the walls. The worst thing was the smell. It stank really badly in there. And we began to investigate the rooms. And for the most part, nothing happened. After a while, we decided that we wanted to go because we'd seen all the rooms. But then we heard something. Something that sounded like screams. At first, they were quiet. But they got louder and louder. The screams were female, I think, and sounded like the person was in very bad pain. At first, Joseph thought they came from outside, but it wasn't. At first, Joseph thought they were coming from outside, but they weren't. They definitely came from one of the rooms downstairs. Uh, ben became really scared to the point that I feared that he was going to freak out and have a panic attack or something. And we decided that it was probably a good idea to leave. The screams got louder and more horrible when we went downstairs. I thought that I could hear the words, help, please, in those screams. And one thing that I did notice was a new smell. It was so bad, like, when we first entered, but it was different. It was so creepy. We ran outside and Ben had to vomit. For him, it was too much and Joseph, the skeptic, was scared. Uh, there were other people living nearby and one of them, a young man, came out and started shouting at us. What were we doing in this house and why were we making such noises? We tried to tell him that it wasn't us and what we were doing there. He didn't believe us at first and thought that we had another friend in there. Eventually, he went into the house. Uh, Joseph and I, we followed him. Ben waited outside. The screaming had already stopped when we entered, and we went through every room again, but there was nobody. Joseph searched after the tracks to see if somebody else had been there, but there was nothing. 
we asked the man if something like that had happened, but he denied it. Uh, I checked back in a while later and the house was demolished. And I hope that with that, the terrible screams are also gone. And that's it. One of my experiences. I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you a wonderful day. Late Night Exploring Gone Wrong. Submitted by user Queen Hot Dog in R slash Ghost Stories. My friend and I decide one summer night to go to this place called the Slaughterhouse. Where I grew up, there was a lot of urban legends about this place and the road it was on, Empire Mine Road. The road was located in the Bay Area of California, and the road was shut down after many accidents had happened, and it was deemed unsafe. Although, it was still open as a walkable trail. Well, we had decided to go alone. I know, two youngish girls at night at an abandoned place. Not the smartest. In the past, we had gone in a group of four or five people and always found other explorers there, so we didn't think much of it and we felt pretty safe. I had brought a film camera with me hoping to capture something possibly otherworldly on film to serve as evidence. I also brought my pocket knife just in case there was a need for it. And for peace of mind, because some homeless people would hang out and there was always rumors of satanic rituals although I knew the ritual rumor was more likely BS. We started the 20-minute walk to the slaughterhouse itself, and this time felt really different. About a minute or two into the walk, I felt heavy with dread and fear, but I didn't want to say anything and creep out my friend or seem like I was chickening out. We made it up to the final turn to a straightaway, where it sounded like we were next to a freeway, but at this point, we were at least a mile off from the nearest road. The loud sounds of cars and car doors closing was supposedly the remains of all the accidents that happened along the road, but I wasn't so sure. I just figured sounds were carried with the wind from the faraway freeways and roads. We made it down the final stretch and we hopped the fence and we were on the property. The place was very different from the last time it looked, as if it had been burned and the buildings were blocked off by rubble, so there wasn't really much to do. I walked to buildings I had photographed at a previous visit for comparison and began joking to my friend as I started feeling a bit more comfortable. I don't remember what I was exactly doing, but I turned my back on the building. My friend stared at me and dead seriously was like, come here now. And I walked over like, what's the matter? Apparently, she had seen a dark figure with red eyes behind me. I didn't personally see it, so I don't know if it was just to scare me or not. But as I stepped toward her, I saw a dark truck traveling the road we had just walked on. This was really weird because the road was gated off and we parked in front of the gate, which meant no one could come through without moving our car. Our car had not been moved, so it would be nearly impossible for a car to get through. I can't stress this enough because it would have been nearly impossible for a car to get through past our car and the locked gate. The truck was dark and barely visible with no lights on, and it didn't make any sound like the road or engine noise. This dark truck pulled up to the gate we had hopped, and we heard yelling to get off my property. We couldn't see anyone in the truck, and it was barely lit up. As soon as it was there, it was gone and with no sound. Neither of us saw a gun, but we both swore he had one. I was like, let's get out of here before whoever or whatever comes back. I nearly ran the mile back, and I'm not someone to run. Once we hit the final stretch, I could see what looked like police lights. We told each other to just remain calm, and we'd be fine. Once we got there, the police greeted us politely, and we returned the politeness, hoping to score points. They had said they'd received a very odd jumbled up call that there had been people caught on the road, They seemed to be just as confused about it as we were. My friend said that we had just been walking on the road to see the place at night and that we never actually hopped the fence, and thank God they believed it. After a few insulting remarks of us being two females on a road at night, we were on our way. We stopped at a well-lit gas station to catch our breath and agreed, never again. I no longer live near this area, but after that, I swore I'd never go back, certainly not at night. 
I still think about this night, and it perplexes me everything that happened. I told myself that it was just the owner, but it just doesn't make sense how they could have gone through our car and that gate and the confusion the police had as well. In addition, many of the photos I took turned out pitch black, even though I had flashlights and the flash on. I had a few developed and looked normal, but I chalked it off to be bad film, but the same thing happened with the pictures I took on my phone as well. Overall, this experience has puzzled me. Thank you all for watching. If you want to find the original stories or the voice actors that read them, the links are in the description down below. If you like this sort of content, we will be posting Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. All of this is being done for free and by a small independent team, so be sure to show some love. I hope you all stay creepy, stay safe, and have a gay day. <laughs>